I was regarded as a labor of love. It wasn't any great chore. If somebody told you at the outset what you would be doing for your partner, you would never have realized it. You, you, you couldn't accept it. I think the bond and the connection is stronger because we're helping each other. He knows that I'm helping him. There's a quiet epidemic sweeping Australia and the world. It's called dementia. Yes, yes. Going for a walk, love? Yes, ma'am. Going for a walk? Yes, ma'am. As the number of cases increase, so too does the pressure on families who care for loved ones at home until it becomes too much and they're forced to place them in institutions. Can you just put that on the tree, Daphne? Daphne. Making that decision would be the hardest possible decision that anybody could possibly make. I was absolutely despondent for the first six months. I really was. I was thinking that, um, what have I got to live for? I was almost suicidal. For the past 12 months, Four Corners has followed three people with dementia. For their families, it's a slow grieving process. For them, it's a journey of no return. Clayman doesn't always remember his birthday, or for that matter, his age, but his family would never let him forget it. Granddad's 73. He's 73. How about that? That's old, isn't it? How about the last Caitlin, We have four children, three boys and a girl, and then we have an uh, extended family of their wives and and their children. So there's nine grandchildren all up. Kiss granddad. <laughs> Sometimes I don't remember the names. But usually John takes over the, and says their name, whether she does it purposely or not, but that reminds me what the name is. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Thank you. Three years ago, Maury, who used to be an electrician, finally discovered the reason for his memory lapses. He has vascular dementia caused by a series of small strokes that disrupt blood flow to his brain. Thank you. I mean, I don't really feel I got dementia except it creeps up sometimes, you know, and I could clean forget what I've done say, a couple of minutes ago or a minute ago, not a long time ago, but in the short term, suddenly I just forget it completely. The doctor's a friend of Maury's and he never noticed, maybe he didn't want to accept it because there's a lot of non-acceptance for dementia. He'd say, oh, Maury's OK, put him through a little test and say, well, he seems all right to me, you know. But he wasn't living with him and wasn't coping with the strange behaviour and the frustration and everything else. And I finally insisted. And that was hard to get him to refer me. <laughs> Murray was diagnosed after a specialist gave him a series of neuropsychological tests. He's asked Murray who the Prime Minister was. Yeah, I, I know. Like, I, I'm interested in politics and I know the name of the Prime Minister. And when he asked me the Prime Minister, that's no problem. And <laughs> guess couldn't what? Remember. I couldn't remember. Yeah. Couldn't remember. No, strawberry. You're not supposed to eat strawberries before your lunch. You can have strawberries after your lunch. Well, Murray used to be a great cook. 
Now he looks in the fridge if he tries, we end up with a mess. So he doesn't do it anymore. Do you want a bit of cheese with this? No. Now he'll say, I'll do the dishes. He'll forget halfway. But that's what he's going to do. You might find dirty cups in the cupboard. Murray used to pay all the bills and do all the financial part because that was his job. Now I have to do it. I'm not that skilled in it. They're things I need to take over and do. There you go. For the past six years, Alzheimer's disease has slowly been consuming the life of 75-year-old Joan Willis. Spin, spin, spin. What about you, Tom? Smoky? You wouldn't do that to me, would you, anyhow? We should eat everything. Alzheimer's is the most common form of dementia. It's a physical disease which kills brain cells and affects memory and behaviour. After being diagnosed, Joan remained in denial. She had been such a bright girl. She did a leaving certificate at 13 years of age, which is quite something in those days, and uh, went on to top business college after that. And from her point of view, it was a disbelief. And I suppose to some extent it was almost disbelief for me. I couldn't understand that my close pal for years was going to have this problem and was going to be progressive. I got to the stage where I've now have to lock the front door if I go out and I turn off the water at the water meter so that she doesn't flood the house. One of the unfortunate things with Alzheimer's is they can turn on a tap but forget to turn it off. Okay. I can't have a meaningful conversation with her. Uh, we can talk, uh, but uh, a conversation's a two-way thing. Uh, and uh, you can't really have a conversation. We were fortunate to uh, get a little dog from a rescue service, and uh, he's been great for her, and that keeps her company. What are you looking at? I'll just see if you want any more yet. Any more what? Food. What? Any more steak and tomato. Hmm. Here we are, darling. We still have a very close group of friends, but it's interesting the effect it has on people. I'm sure it's the situation the friends just don't know how to cope with it, so that the dinner parties and that sort of business that we'd had for years have all gone. It's, it's to some extent, like a fairly lonely life as, as the disease progresses. Ken is Joan's full-time carer. The only outside assistance he receives is when his wife goes to a local respite centre for dementia sufferers. She goes three times a week. Hello. Hi, Ken. Hello, Joan. <laughs> How are you today? I'm fine. How are you? I'm very well, yes. Yeah, so you look lovely today. So do you. Oh, thank you. Well, I'm in the yellow and you're in the blue. <laughs> Joan would have been coming here now probably for... Uh, pro probably about 12 months, and we have seen a decline. Well done, Bruce. Whoa, well done. I think uh, once we connect with Joan, um, you, you see her old <laughs> spark, her sense of humour. Oh, that wasn't much good. <laughs> she loves us to tease her. She teases us back. <laughs> oh, that fixed me. <laughs> Here comes another more gentle one. Ken is a fiercely independent carer and I know they've had assessments from the aged care assessment team and other help has been offered but Ken is, um, I think, really wants to do the bulk of the caring for himself or by, by himself um, and he manages it absolutely magnificently. Well, I've decided not to utilise those services because I'm, as I said, I'm still physically fit and... I just don't feel that I need to call on other people to do it. I, as long as I can do it, I, I will do it. I've always been a doing sort of a person. I think um, 